Hey, amazing. Welcome everyone to Do It in Durham Week. This is our 10th year of Do It in Durham Entrepreneurship Week and Durham Region celebration of entrepreneurship held each November during Global Entrepreneurship Week. It's a week of collaboration of Durham's business support, educational and networking organizations who have come together to encourage and support entrepreneurs, support job creators and innovators who create economic growth in the region of Durham. So if you're looking to start a business, invest in a business, grow a business, we encourage you to do it in the Durham region. And thank you to our sponsors. We have lots of great community partners and collaborators this year. And without their help, we wouldn't have been able to put this event series on. So thank you so much to our sponsors as well. And with that, I will hand it over to Tammy to talk about Facebook ads. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I see a few familiar faces. So great to have you guys. For those who don't know me, I am Tammy and I've been working in the Facebook world or social media world for about 15 years. So today we're gonna learn about uh, Facebook ads. <clears throat> um, if you're looking for Google ads, you, good luck. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to find anyone who will actually do Google ads from a social media standpoint, um, just so you know. Uh, and Facebook ads is another tough one. Uh, a lot of social media people have uh, washed their hands of Facebook ads. So if you're going to get into a, a, a true uh, ad strategy marketing, please look for those companies who really focus on that. There's some great companies out there who will do a full-blown marketing plan to come up with an ad strategy for you, okay? So look for those kind of things. But if you're just wanting to do this yourself, I'm going to show you how to create an ad um, I'm going to give you some of my tips and tricks so that you can get the most out of your ad. We all have small budgets, right? And in all honesty, it's tough for us to compete in the Facebook ad world because we don't have the money that the larger companies are investing. So why not, if we're going to do it, um, you know, why not at least learn some tips and tricks? So when we're talking about ads, there's two that you need to be aware of. There are boosted posts and then there are sponsored ads. Okay. A boosted post is just taking an existing post, investing some money by boosting it to be seen by more people. That's really all a boosted post is going to do for you. It's going to give you more visibility. Um, what I tend to do, um, I will do boosted posts. I, I don't do them as often. I prefer to do a sponsored ad. Um, because if you're going to do, uh, if you just want to get your, your post seen by more people, do you know just by sharing it into a variety of groups as yourself, not as your business page, as yourself, sharing it into a variety of groups, like seven groups, you'll probably get the same visibility that you would get if you invested $50 in a boosted ad. So really think about that, okay? To do a simple take five minutes, 10 minutes to share it into a bunch of groups will save you that $50, okay? So uh, boosted posts, I'll use them more so if I have an event coming up or a client has an event coming up, we'll boost posts just to get more eyes on it or boost the event. Otherwise, we stick to sponsored ads. So I'm going to go into screen share mode because I'm going to physically walk you through doing an ad, okay? I'm not going to talk about boosted posts. However, some of the elements you're going to learn in a sponsored ad will apply to a boosted post. The thing is, with a boosted post, you're limited to what you can do. This is why I prefer to do a sponsored ad because then you have more options. So I'm just going to go into my Facebook. Um, it's weird. I had it on there and it didn't show. Okay. Share screen. There we go. All right. So when you're in your Facebook, this is your personal Facebook. The best way that I recommend doing this is down the left-hand side, go to ads manager. If you don't see it, just click on the see more button and you'll find it somewhere in this list, okay? But you want to go to Ads Manager. Now, when you go into Ads Manager, I'm not going to get into complicated ads. Trust me, there's huge marketing strategies you can do. I'm not your girl. If you want a big marketing strategy and ads, I'm not your girl. 
I can recommend people, but yeah. Um, but if you want to do some basic ads that will get you the visibility, you've got maybe some uh, Black Friday deals coming up, um, then doing a sponsored ad will help get more eyes on you, okay? So once you go in here, you're going to see an option, a green button that says create. So you're just going to click on it. The first element here is to ter determine what your objective is is. Now, the two that I tend to work with is traffic and leads. Those are the two I tend to work with. Here's the reality. I'm not investing enough money to expect a massive conversion, but I know my money will get me seen. So I figure the traffic is the best way for me to get more visibility, more eyes. Okay. But leads, this is really, really cool. If you do not already have a CRM system built up, if you're just, or maybe you're doing, you have a special free download that you want to get out there, you can actually create a lead ad within Facebook. In this lead ad, you actually create a lead form right inside the ad. So when people click the button at the bottom of the ad that says learn more or shop now, whatever your button is, it can open up into a lead form and that lead form will have the questions that you're specifically asking. So email, um, name, you can ask multiple choice questions. You can have them write a small answer to a more detailed question. Um, and what happens is, so within this lead ad, you get them to fill out the form. Well, right at the end of the form, you can you have another button that you can either drive the traffic somewhere else, maybe to your website, or to actually receive the free download. Okay. Once the information is put into the lead form, Facebook provides you with a CSV Excel file that you can download. So now you can take those leads. You can do follow-ups, but you can also upload it into your old CRM, or if you're just starting a new email distribution list, you can then upload it into that list. So Lee, I'm not going to go into a lead ad um, because everything else we're going to do is the same. It's just the lead form that will be different. Um, so if you want guidance on that lead form portion, just reach out to me after the fact and I can guide you on how to work with the lead form itself. It is a great feature. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're doing downloads, free downloads. What a great way to offer something free, get some leads out of it without driving the traffic to a website because we tend to lose people when we drive them somewhere else, right? So if we can keep them in Facebook through a process and they get their download, now you've got an email address and you can follow up to see how they made out with that free download and that will continue the conversation. Okay, so for today's purpose, we're just going to do traffic. Again, there are different um, options here, but if it depends on uh, what is a free download, uh, I believe that's Benny. I think you go by Benny, right? I just want to make sure I say your name right. Um, a free download is like, um, let's say I'm a real estate agent. I could do up a, uh, a PDF that gives people tips on preparing their home for selling. And so that becomes a free download. So it's a document that gives them education about whatever your business is, but it's really a value. So it's teaching them, not selling to them. It's giving them value for free and hoping that you can then get the conversation continued after they've received that free download. And that really comes down to us doing a follow up, right? With anyone that receives our information. Uh, an ebook, exactly. Sienna just suggested an ebook, exactly. So anything that you can offer for free in a document style. Uh, how many? Uh, sorry, Sherry, just confirming that ad. This is created already. Per, oh yes, okay. So Sherry, when we're working with ads, a boosted post is done from a business page. A sponsored ad is actually done through our personal, but it'll be linked to whichever business page you will link it to. Um, and that's because when we get billed, it's actually your personal that's getting billed. So that's where your ads will be sitting. Even your boosted posts end up 
uh, going through uh, your personal. Uh, Mark is asking if boosted posts are free. No, anytime that you want to do any type of ad, a boosted post or a sponsored ad, you pay for that, but you decide how much you want to pay. You get to set the price. There is minimums, daily minimums, depending on which style of ad you're doing. They range from $3 a day to $5 a day. I don't think they go higher than that. Um, how many pages download should we prepare? So this is an interesting question um, that you asked because it's a perception, right? It's a visual perception. If I gave a person a one page download, they would not see value. But if I gave them like a three pager, they would start to see value. So here's the trick, write the content, but put pictures throughout and you can take a one page document of value and turn it into three pages just by sprinkling in visuals. Okay. So I think around a three to four page download is really cool. And if you're going to do a one pager, then make it very graphically appealing as well. The colors, like the visual appeal, because you need to give them a reason to think they're getting value. Uh, is the content in the free download propri proprietary as I see everyone copying and posting? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you're going to run into that problem um, where people just take other people's information. So I just recommend just put out what you believe and, and just go from there. There are sites that you can utilize, that you can take existing content. Uh, the site that I use is called Quillbot. Let me write it in the chat. Uh, let me do a stop share because I couldn't figure that out. So this, this particular website, I just dropped it in the chat. It's called Quillbot. You can take existing content, paste it into this website, and you hit a button that says paraphrase, and it will rewrite it for you. So now you can eliminate any copyright issues. You can take content that you might've posted six months ago and just paste it into Quillbot, ask it to paraphrase, you get a new, um, new written words and now you have content again. So it's a great site for reusing, but also taking other information and making sure you do not uh, copyright. Tammy, I'm interested to know what are the biggest changes to the algorithms in the last year? I know Meta is always changing. The last time I did an ad was a year ago. Related to this is how much minimum budget and time runaway do we need for Meta understand for Meta to understand who our audience is and begin to see results? My understanding is that one-off campaigns are not very effective. Yeah, in all honesty, if you're going to invest in ads, you want a marketing strategy and you're going to, I usually would suggest um, it's a story. So I'm going to show you in the ad, my trick uh, by using carousel ads, but it's about, it's going to be about telling a story. So like five ads in a series, telling that story from start to finish, walk the user through the story, right? Guiding them to get to that fifth ad that's going to ultimately sell to them. Uh, are we to hire a graphic designer to create this download or we just do it MS Word? Uh, yeah, you could do just MS Word and save it as a PDF. You do not need to hire anyone. Uh, Word will have templates that you can utilize as well. Okay, so Sarah, we'll get into a bit more um, of that, of your question. Um, as we go through. Okay. All right. So let's get into this. All right. So I'm going to start with a traffic ad. Again, I'm not investing enough money to truly get conversion. So this is going to be about saying, I'm going to invest $50 just to get visibility. If you truly want conversion, yes, you need to do like a five ad campaign. Boom, 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 boom. And you're, you, you, you'll be adjusting your audience as you go along, but otherwise um, you're going to keep retargeting. So those ads are going to keep going into the same people's news feeds so you can tell that story. Okay. So then I'm going to hit continue. Oh, wait, let me go back because I think right at the bottom. Yeah, I apologize. I thought it was at the bottom. At the bottom of the first screen, you have a name, your campaign. I highly recommend you are detailed on what the name of your ad is about because down the road, 
If you want to go and use this ad again, it'll be easier to find by the keywords you use. So I'm just going to do testing purposes just so I know for later. And I will use the exact same name throughout all of these elements. So how this works is you have a campaign. It's your binder. It's the binder. Inside the campaign, you have your ad set. So the ad set is going to be our budgets, our demographics. And then the ad is the next section. And that's the creative part. That's the content. Okay. So I like to make sure that I name all three elements exactly the same. Just trust me down the road, a year down the road, you're going to be like, Oh, I need that ad worked well for me. This will make it easier for you to find your ad. Okay, and I'm going to hit continue. Choose a campaign. We're just doing a manual, meaning we're, we're just doing it. Okay. I'm not going to get, you can, ideally, you could work through some suggestions that Facebook's going to offer you, but I'm going to get you right into uh, doing this. Okay. Uh, yes, we're creating the ads from our personal account. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I will... Focus on this, and then we'll jump into the questions um, after because I saw some of the feedback there. So it's perfect. So um, the first step when we're inside the ad, this is the, the campaign. This is sort of the top level. A couple of things that you need to be aware of. If you are in real estate, if you are trying, if you are doing a job offer, um, you must identify that you're a special ads category. So these are the other ones. If you're a financing and you're going to run an ad uh, offering some credit options, financing options. You need to be very careful because you will be a special ads category. What this is about is you will be restricted on certain demographics when you choose a special ad category. If you do not choose this feature and it applies to your ad, your ad will not get approved. So it's really important, guys, especially real estate. Right off the bat, if you're a real estate agent, no ifs, ands, or buts. You come in here and click housing. Simple. Because otherwise your ad's just going to get rejected. So you might as well do it. Okay? So be aware of that. Uh, another reason that people's ads get rejected, and nobody ever believes me when I tell them this, that people laugh when I say this. Um, but the other reason your ad's getting rejected is you're using words like you and your. You cannot write an ad that singles a person out. So instead of using words like you and your, you're going to, we, our, always a group of people with your words. Trust me. Okay. Otherwise they'll say, sorry, you're going against our community standards because you're, um, they, they basically say you're singling someone out. So be aware of that. Uh, the reason special ads categories came into play was because of privacy issues, all the stuff that went down with Facebook. So some laws, will, laws, I don't know if they're laws, but some things were put into place that they had to follow. And this happens to be one of them. So please make sure if you fall into any of these, you mark it. Otherwise, uh, I don't want that. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems, okay? Um, I'm not, now, the buying type in our situation, guys, this is just defaulted to be auction. Leave it this way. Basically, here, you're kind of fighting for space. This is why I say we can't, we don't invest enough money to be seen or get conversion the way we expect because we're in an auction. So if we're, we're only investing $50, we really are. Facebook's not looking at us. They're looking, they're looking at the person who's willing to spend $5,000. So you just show up lower in essence of where your ads are going to be seen. But I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that might help you get seen a little bit more. So you don't need to choose any of these. Now you could choose to edit your campaign objective at this point. If you decide that you didn't want traffic, you want to change it to engagement or want to change it to a lead. You can change it here, but we're just going to literally all of this. We're not doing any split testing. I'm not going to get into split testing. That's a whole other ball game. Okay. I'm going to teach you guys how to create an ad so you can go and just do ads. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to hit the next button in the bottom right hand corner. All right, so now we come into the ad set. This is where your demographics, this is where your budget, those elements are going to fall into place. So the first question they're asking you is, where do you want to send 
the traffic. Okay. So in most cases, people are saying website for obvious reasons. But if you happen to be a salon, you might want to choose calls. Most people work with mobile, right? So what happens is if you do the call one, if they're on their phone, when they hit that button, it'll automatically take them right into their phone, put your phone number in it, and they just have to tap the button to dial. So if you want to drive traffic directly to call you, then use that call feature. Okay. Otherwise, most of us are just sending it to a website. Now, again, not getting into any of this. This is all extensive stuff that you just, if you're going to invest in ads, if you say that you want to invest $5,000, then you're going to go into a lot more detail. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to jump down to budget. This is really important. So one, in a boosted post, you can only do a daily budget, okay? But in a sponsored ad, I love this. In a sponsored ad, you can choose a lifetime budget. And, the re and there's a trick to this. And the reason I recommend you do this. So I'm going to choose instead of daily budget, lifetime, okay? And I'm going to type in $50, okay? Now... Depending on how much money you will put in here will determine if you get an error based on your dates because this is the budget money is done first before your dates. So you could get an error. Don't worry about the error message until, so here I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to drop in a date and see if it does it. Yeah. So this is kind of the error message I get. So I only invested $50, but based on my start and end date and how long, remember I said there's minimums. So in this, they're saying your minimum budget for that time frame must be $62. So don't panic too much on that. You can just go and start changing your dates until you get that error message gone. So I'm at 50.04. Um, so at this point, I would just change it to 50.04. I'll take the extra four cents. Um, or So you can either adjust your budget or change out your dates. Okay, depending on which way you want, where you want, if you don't want to spend more than $50, you're going to play with your dates, okay? Now, it's telling me I'm going to move this to tomorrow just in case I forget to delete something. I don't know. That'd be funny if this ad went out. Um, so you want to do your start dates and your times. I tend to do um, my end end time at, at um, almost midnight. That way, I'm getting a whole other day out of the ad. So my start time, I don't worry about so much, but my end time... Uh, I will always do it at like 11.59. So now here's the trick. So a lifetime budget. So if I only have $50 that I'm investing in this ad, I want to get the most out of my $50. But I'm not worth anything to Facebook. They're not even really, you're just fluff to them at $50. So I'm going to trick the system. I'm going to say, you know what? Well, I want to get the most out of my $50. So once you, and you can only do this with a lifetime budget and lifetime budgets are only available on sponsored ads, not boosted posts. Keep that in mind. So what you're going to see here is this show more options, run ads all the time. That's the default. So your $50 is going to start from the time the the time that you launch your ad to when it finishes, it's going to take the $50 and figure out how to spread it out over those days. Okay. Here's my problem. I'm going to hit this edit button. I'm going to say run ads on a schedule. I don't want my ads running in the middle of the night. That's wasted money for me. So you can specifically choose the days and the hours. If your target market is uh, stay-at-home moms, are you targeting them at 8 a.m. in the morning? No, no. They're getting their kids ready for school. So why have an ad show up at 8 a.m. if your target market isn't going to be online at that time? So you can really guide this. You can choose by every day. These are our slots, okay, each one. So I can, uh, for myself, if I'm going to run an ad for me, I don't actually run them on weekends. Okay. I, I figure business owners are busy with their families. So I, this is my, this is what I tend to do. Whoops. Oh, not Saturday. And I go like, this is about kind of the range I do. So the blue is where my ads are going to run from 6 a.m. to midnight, Monday to Friday. 
Okay, so I'm going to get more bang for my buck out of the $50 than if I let it run whenever it runs. Okay, so again, you can only do this if you put in a lifetime budget for this ad. So do some research on your target market. Know them, right? Six o'clock is probably not a good time for me if I had stay-at-home moms as my target market, right? That think about what time the kids come home from school. So that four o'clock and then they're getting dinner ready. So really be strategic when you're choosing this, okay? So important. And then we come down into audience. This is the key. This is really understanding your market. Here's the thing, guys. It's not about these huge numbers. What you're going to see over here on the right-hand side is the audience definition. And as we start putting our demographics in, this will start to adjust based on what we're doing, okay? So it's telling me right now my estimated size is like 25 million people. That's of zero value to me. It's To me, I don't want to see high numbers, right? Think about that for a second. Are you truly hitting your market when you're hitting those kind of numbers? So I think it's really important that you understand your market. So I'm going to give you an example uh, as we work through this. So I'm working with a client and we're doing, they are, are spice uh, uh, hot sauces, okay? So with Christmas coming, we're doing a bunch of ads um, selling their mini bottles of hot sauces. Here's how we're doing it. The first ad that went out in October, we targeted literally the richest um, town, uh, subdivisions, towns in the GTA. So I literally Googled and asked for the top richest cities or towns in Toronto. There was Forest Hill, there was Briar Path, Bridal Path, right? All of those come up. So we physically, that ad, we only targeted those people, okay? The second ad we're running right now, we're only targeting people in the northern towns. The northern towns do online shopping because they are not close to shopping malls. So again, I just sat on Google and went north. And I looked and I wrote down all the northern cities that were far enough that they would be relying on online shopping. Okay. So really think about who you're targeting and understand where they are, what they like, things like that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So you start off, uh, we're not getting into custom. So start off with location. Okay. I'm going to click edit. First thing, guys, please don't target the entire Canada. You're wasting your $50 because $50 across Canada, right? If you really think about that, it's not a lot of people that truly are going to see your stuff because it's just minimal. So you really want to define. And that's why with we're doing a total of five ads. We're, we've broken them down into different. I've even got, I, I did Googling and got the 10 uh, richest cities in Canada. As I was going through the list, I had at least six of them, uh, it was more than 10, but that's what I was Googling. Six of them uh, showed up in Quebec. So we're going to do a separate ad just for those Quebec uh, Quebec towns. Then there was, a, um, in BC, there was about five. So we decided to do a separate ad for those five rich cities, right? So we're really kind of narrowing it down so we're not capturing all of Canada right? Don't try to do all of Canada, US. Don't be deceived by the uh, numbers. So here's the cool thing. No, you, you can have so much fun with this. And I'm going to go uh, northern in essence, well, east, I guess for me. So if I said Peterborough, for example, okay, it's going to pop up, but I, I'm going to select it, but I want to show you something. So it puts a radius around Peterborough of plus 25. You can choose current city only, or you can say, well, I only want to go 10 miles. It is in miles. Okay. But check this out. If I look at this and go, but I want to hit these guys up in Kawatha Lakes. What you're going to do in this, you've got a little drop pin button. 
If you click this, I can then just move and drop. Literally click and drop. Whoops. Click and drop. So now all of a sudden I can get a little bit more geared towards kind of the areas I want to target. Because here's the thing, not every city is in here. So if you happen to live in Panorama BC, Panorama doesn't exist on Facebook. So therefore it's Invermere. But if I want to target those people in Panorama, if I drop a pin there, no matter what happens, whatever city they've chosen, it will still be picked up because I dropped a pin in that local area. You can search by postal codes. So now you're targeting certain subdivisions, certain areas by postal code, right? So I'll, if I just type it in, okay, it's going to look, search, come on, baby. It might not find this one because it should though. Yeah, because it's not, it's Bondhead and Bondhead is not a recognized place. And I can't think of a postal code off the top of my head to use. Anyways, you can type in postal code. You can type in GPS coordinates. So you can really get detailed here, okay? Um, you can type in a physical address. Whoops, come on, baby. Don't prove me. There it is. So I could type in an address, select it. It marks the address. And at that point, I can decide if I want to make it bigger to expand further out. Or I can say currents. Uh, this one, it only allows me one mile. It doesn't let me do current uh, uh, to only do that address. It makes me go uh, minimum one mile. So really think about that, guys. Where is your market sitting? Don't just randomly pick Canada. Don't just randomly pick Ontario. Really understand your market, where they're located, and zero in on that. Do you know where ads show up? Most people don't actually know. It's, you know, we log into Facebook and we see them come into our news feed. Okay, that's not where they just stay. They show up in Messenger. If you are playing games on your phone and you use Facebook to log into those games and you want to get free coin and they say, watch an ad, it's potentially your ad. They will show up in those game apps as well. So you show it, you show up in stories, you show up in different, um, uh, the sidebars. There's a lot of places your ads can show up. So be aware of that. You get some great visibility, okay? Um, yeah, Tracy. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't realize uh, where ads can take you or where they physically end up. So you can get a lot out of your money, okay? You can really work your money. Okay, so please be detailed on where you're selecting. Now, as you're doing this, you're going to notice on the right-hand side that Facebook is going to guide you. So they're saying, you know what? This is pretty good. You've defined your audience. If you get a green bar, then Facebook is saying, hats off. You did good. You did good with your demographics. They will tell you what your estimated reach is going to be and approximate links, uh, link clicks. So when people are going to click. Okay, now we're not done. We only just did cities, locations. So then you're going to come down, whoops, and you're going to choose your age. Right off the bat, guys, at least start at about 27. Don't waste your ad money on anyone under that age because they're not seeing your ads because that, that demographics is not really looking at their Facebook. So don't waste your money on your ad. Okay, don't think, well, no. Um, what I would actually recommend, uh, Instagram has your younger, your younger audience. I, now I know you can do an ad here and have it go both into Facebook and Instagram, but personally I would do two separate ads. I would do a Facebook ad and then I would go into my Instagram and do an Instagram ad. That way I can define my Instagram audience because my Instagram audience is different than my Facebook audience. Okay. 
So think about that. It's okay to have this particular ad go into both platforms. There's no issue with that. I just want you to really think about that in the sense of who's your market sitting on Instagram and who's your market sitting on Facebook. And do you do two separate ads? Okay. Um, and then you can decide on what the uh, highest age you want to go. You may not work with seniors. So you may want to drop it uh, to 59. Just dropping in under the 60 mark. So really understand that. Uh, you may only be working with women. You may only be working with men. If that's the case, make sure you change your gender element as well. Now, we're not done. Okay, so now we're going to go into this detailed targeting. So I'm going to click edit. This particular feature here, uh, can we do this ad without the white paper free download? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's just if you were doing a lead ad, Benny. Uh, you don't have to do a free download. That was just a suggestion on for lead ads, okay? Um, so yeah, you can do whatever you want with this one. When we get into the creative part, you'll see what uh, some suggestions there. So detailed targeting. This is where you now add the characteristics of your audience, okay? Now, I'm gonna use real estate as the example um, just because I find it easier to work with. So if I happen to be a Century 21 uh, real estate agent um, and I am going to do a listing, okay, I have a house for sale and I decide I'm going to invest 20 bucks just to get some visibility, 20 bucks, okay? All right, so I'm Century 21, but do you know you can target the other real estate companies? So when I type in Royal LePage, I'm going to be targeting their audience, their audience. This is the people that are following or are interested in Royal LePage. So I'm now targeting them. They've done the work. They've built their following. I'm targeting their following. Now, you need to understand that if let's say they have 100 followers, and I now target Royal LePage, what will happen with my demographic is Facebook will look at it and go, okay, here's the 100 followers that Royal LePage has. Tammy only wants people from the ages 27 to 59. So they'll pull those people out. Now I'm down to maybe 80 people. Then I'll look at the 80 people and say, what else is she looking for? Oh, she only wants people who um, live in boom, 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 boom. Now I might be down to 50 people. So it will do a process of elimination based on my demographics, but I'm targeting someone else's following. So I literally can do this with any company, right? Um, uh, and I just completely drew a blank on real estate companies. Go figure, Century 21. Um, so you'll see that, okay? Now, if I was uh, in the fashion industry, right, I can start looking for some of the big competitors in the in the in the system i, I i'm gonna just try this i don't know if walmart's gonna show up but i'm just trying it it is yay walmart's here but what you're gonna notice guys you're gonna have employees if you look here employees job titles things like that so be very careful because if i was a real estate agent and this happened to be a real estate company i don't know if i want to target their employees it really depends on what that ad is about. If I was doing a, a real estate ad where I was looking to build my team, do I want to target the other employers? I don't know. Maybe I do, right? They don't know that you've strategically targeted them, right? Most people don't understand how, how they get hit with an ad. So you can be very strategic here when choosing who you're targeting. Uh, yes, yes. Tracy, make sure you and I have a conversation. Okay, girl. Um, I was just reading hers. Okay. So you can start by targeting some of the big companies already out there, right? That already exist. But then you can get into more details. Now, you can start typing in or you can click this browse button. When you click this browse, you're going to find some categories under here. And as you click on each one of them, they're going to give you some specific, I'm trying to get my screen to go down further and I can't to show you. Oh, there we go. So demographics, you can get into education. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these stats are going to be for US-based. 
Um, Canada, there's certain restrictions that Facebook cannot, from a privacy standpoint, they can't ask for. For example, uh, edu uh, income, income levels, you can only see for the states, okay? So you can only target them. So there's certain elements in, within Canada you're not allowed to target, and you'll see that as you go through. But education, are you looking for people in certain fields of study? So if I'm looking for someone who is in business, right, I'm going to type it in. And hopefully if I'm looking for nursing, it will start. I probably, I don't know if nursing or nurse is the way to go. There we go. Right. So you can browse specifically by what people do for a living. Okay. Now, as you go through these, are you looking for certain parents? You can even break this down by age demographic for parents based on the ages of their kids, right? So if I'm targeting stay-at-home moms, then I'm going with parents with toddlers, uh, one to two, I'm going with three to five, right? I don't want all because I don't want to waste my money. So be very careful. You need to go through and define your demographics into detail, get the biggest bang for your buck. And you'll see this interest. This gets into hobbies and shopping. Anyone, if you're trying to sell something, you know, why not go after the people who like to shop? Everything you do on social media is tracked. They know all our behaviors. Sad. This is the worst part about doing ads. You guys realize that how much information they know about us, right? Everything's tracked. So you really can get into some details of who you're targeting, even behaviors in the point of where is my, here it is, uh, my purchase behavior. I love this one, engage shoppers. So those people who continuously click ads who are buying online through Facebook, they're tracked and now you can target them. Okay, I can target if I want, um, say I'm a hairdresser, okay? So if I just type in hair, I have a ton of options and go through them. Select whichever ones you feel appropriate to your industry. If I'm in mortgages, type in mortgage. There's mortgage loans, mortgage specialists. These are job titles on these ones. These ones are interests, right? Do your research, really define your audience. And when you do, your numbers will jive that you're... Don't look at this and go, oh, is that all I'm reaching? That's your daily reach for $50. That's pretty awesome if I can reach that many people. And they're saying I'm going to get between 5 to 18 clicks. I just hope those clicks will turn into something more. Okay? If you're investing thousands and thousands of dollars, you better be getting conversion on your ads. If you're only going to invest a few dollars, only expect visibility. Don't expect conversion. It will happen. I'll be honest with you. The hot spot, uh, hot sauces we're doing right now, we're getting great conversion on them. And it, obviously, it's the time of year. They're gift sets. Of course, we're going to get conversion. But not all businesses can get conversion. So know that if you're going to invest money, you're going to come into a situation that you're losing money. It's really going to be about your visibility, getting seen. Now, as you're going through, you can put in as much detailed demographics. Really think about that. Who's the competitors in your market? So for me, I can target social. I'm sure I can target social media examiner. They're pretty large. There they are. So social media examiner, they have a, uh, they're a, a large social media company. I think they're out of the States that I follow. Why wouldn't I target their fan base? Right? It's my market too. So use this strategically to target those. Okay. So I'll just click on that for now. Now, one thing you want to make sure is right here, advantage detailed targeting. Please put a check mark here. What this will do for you, Facebook, based on what you've done, and as your ad is running, Facebook will actually push your ad into more news feeds if they feel that they can expand your demographics based on what you've done. So they will, they will help you to reach more people beyond what you thought. 
Okay. So they work, they do help you. So please make sure that check mark is next to reach people beyond your detailed targeting selections when it's likely to improve imp uh, performance. And then save this audience and give it a good name. That way, if you ever want to use the exact same audience, all you do is back way back up here where we started with audience. Instead of create new audience, you would click use saved audience and all your audi audiences will be here. You can search them to make it easier to find. Okay, so you don't have to keep doing this over and over and over again if you're to keep target if you're targeting the exact same people. Um, oh, sorry. Um, a lot of people use Facebook just to post social photos and not for business or buying anything. Can we exclude this audience from our ads? There's you are not going to know who that is, so you don't have control on excluding those people because you don't know. Um, but hopefully with the demographics that you've chosen, your ad's going to end up where it needs to be. Okay. Um, sorry, Sherry, I'm not sure which, yes, we will get a recording and I'm not sure which icon, um, you were looking for, hon. I'm sorry. Okay. So just let me refresh when it comes to choosing locations and, and or the demographics, really understand the age of your people. Don't waste your money. I'm telling you under 27, maybe 26, you, they might see your ads, but odds are they're not, they're not checking it. They're not checking their Facebook enough. Do some research on Google. Find, don't just target Canada, do some research and break it down. And once you start doing the research, you'll find more elements. Like I said to you guys, when I was searching for the richest cities in Canada, as I was doing it and found that there was multiple cities within certain provinces, I realized, okay, those are separate ads. There's enough there that I can invest that $50 and really, and that's all we've been investing, $50 per ad. That's all we're spending. Our total budget is $300, right? Again, it's the timing of year. She has a product to sell. Um, and really define, go Look for who your biggest competitors are, right? The big companies, because those, those are the ones you'll be able to target through, uh, through here, okay? Um, if they don't show up, they don't show up, but it doesn't hurt to type them in and see if they show up as a, as a company that you can target, okay? Um, um, yes, okay, so Sherry, uh, yes, okay. Um, so Sherry's saying when choosing age, it says unavailable ad in this special category. So if you're a real estate agent, for example, and you choose special ad category, or if you're in mortgages and you're doing something about a loan, that's where your restrictions start coming in. When you come in to do these demographics, you will not be able to do certain things. And that is the privacy issues. So you won't be able to choose your age. If you're a special ads category, and you'll also be limited on certain characteristics that you're choosing, those characteristics won't be available. Like we were, nah, so yeah, yours is finance. So Sherry, you cannot, okay? So keep that in, in mind. Um, you'll probably get a lower return with your money, okay? Kathy's asking, what is the recommended size of audience? Um is tax returns a restricted category? I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Benny. I actually don't know that answer. Um, recommended. So this is really tough. I don't think there is a recommended audience size as long as you. So this is telling me, I don't know if you guys noticed because I hadn't finished out my demographics. Did you notice that I got this error message here from Facebook? It's saying that I may get zero links. So this is where uh, Facebook will guide you on your uh, audience size, your ideal audience size. And that's when you're falling into this here. If you can get a green bar, I'm trying to do this, so you guys can see it over here on the right. If you can get a green bar, that means you've done well. So watch as you're typing in your, your, um, typing in each characteristic, each city, different things like that. Watch this here. And if you can get it in this green, you're good to go. Okay. I hope that is 
the answer that'll work for you because I can't tell you what that ideal size is going to be, okay? It really will also come down to the size of the industry, right? Because you could end up, uh, a lot more people are interested in certain product or services uh, more so than another. So when you start doing your demographics, you could end up having a larger audience size just because of how it all falls in together, okay? So make sure, guys, that you save your audience as well. Are there more women than men, more women using Facebook? Yes. So there's more women using Facebook than men. Um, I really, to be honest with you, if I'm doing an ad, I will decide on my gender. Um, for me to target a man, I, it has to be a very specific product for that man or a service for that man. Because it's rare that they're the ones that are going to click and shop, right? It's the women who do that. So it's it would be rare, um, you know, if I was doing, um, you know, selling a bar set of some sort, then I might want to target men. But if I'm going to be doing, you know, into that, the fashion world, for example, I probably will only, I will limit that. Okay, so really think about who your market is. Karen's asking in this example, if the bar is green, why does that error message come up at all? Yeah, and um, it's just because my numbers are really small. See here, link clicks, because I really haven't defined my audience, even though it's saying this is my definition of the numbers is good, but they're saying you're it's too small is really what they're saying here, because I probably won't get any link clicks on it. Okay, um, if I start adding in more, that will get rid of that. Yet you'll notice that my green bar will stay the same, Karen. Um, so if I type in um, fashion, accessories, fashion, and as you start going, it'll start eventually. <laughs> and it will eventually, oh, it says all errors have been resolved, but I'm still getting that. So I still haven't reached my numbers. Yeah, see, I'm still getting a zero. So it's not my audience size really isn't enough for link clicks. I think it's usually, in all honesty, I think it's around that 200,000, 250,000 mark is where I believe is kind of the sweet spot. And you'll notice that as you're going through here and you really define this. So at this point, Karen, I will continue working on my demographics to get rid of this message because I don't want to have the option that or potentially that I'm not going to get any clicks, right? So I will keep working this. I'm not actually sure why it's doing that when they're telling me it's defined here, but down here, they're telling me I'm not getting any. So I know that I have not defined my market good enough. Okay. So be aware of that, guys. Facebook, I'll give them kudos where they deserve it. For those who know me, I've been dealing with, uh, for the last five weeks, I've been in, in and out of Facebook jail. Uh, it'll be five times now. I just came back out this morning. Um, so I, I usually right now don't have many nice things to say about Facebook, uh, but I'll give them kudos where they deserve it. And in ads, they're pretty good at really guiding you. Okay. So take advantage of the guides that they um, have there. Uh, Kathy's saying, I have the same question as Tracy had earlier about targeting the followers of other travel agencies. Yeah. So Kathy, we can even get on the phone and talk about that into more detail. Um, it really comes down to that when you're targeting. So if I was doing travel agencies, um, uh, uh, Sunwing. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to target both of them. Okay. So at this point, what happens is when this ad goes out, it'll look at those two Sunwings elements and they'll start, they'll take the entire audience and then they'll start breaking it down based on, on what else I've chosen for the demographics. So it'll pull out the people that fit my age demographics. It'll pull out the people that fit these certain, uh, you know, uh, buying habits, you know, whatever elements that I've put into here, it will do a process of elimination where they live, things like that. Take advantage, guys. If you can target competitors, go for it. They have no idea that you're doing this strategically, right? So why not? They've built it for you. <laughs> I love it. I, that's one of my favorite things about doing ads, being able to do that. Okay. Don't forget to save your audience. All right. Now you can change your languages and things like that if it's necessary. So, um, you know, if you're doing an ad for Quebec, you might only want to target um, those who speak English, 
in that area, right? Or whatever it might be. So just, you can choose. I don't tend to do this because most people's Facebooks, the um, they already have their language set up for them. So whether they see a post in English, it won't show up in English for them. It will show up in French. It's automatically done that for them. So I don't tend to, to even get involved in languages. I just leave it. Okay. All right. And placement. Remember earlier I was talking about where your ads show up and they can even show up in game apps. That's what really what this is about. Now you can choose to do manual. I choose to just do, I, it used to be called automatic placements. They've changed the name to Advantage Plus. Um, I just let them decide where my ad's going to go because they'll put it in all the places it should go. Okay. Depending on the ad sometimes. Uh, so it even goes into like in-stream videos. I'm going to show you that. Um, but it will tell you if your ad won't fit into that format. So you'll be told where, where can we, where it will. <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to get so much in so that we don't run out of time. Um, it will guide you on where your ads are going to end up. So utilize as much of the automated system as you can. Um, Sherry's saying this, this should be a two to three hour session. I know I'm sorry. Uh, so we target competitors so we can push our ads to their followers on Facebook. Correct. Um, it will go out into their newsfeed. It's really cool. So go for it, right? Target them. All right. Now we're going to scroll down here. Uh, none of this in all honesty, guys defaulted again. You do not need to change any of this. You're not getting into those kind of ads at all. At this point, the default works great. So I'm just going to click next. Now, this last section, this is where the actual ad is. This is your written content. This is what is you're selling to your audience. So at this point, you will be selecting your page. So you want to make sure you select whichever business page this ad is technically for. It will not show up on your business page. This is not a post on your business page. This is an ad that's going to run in the background and be pushed out to people's news feed and other locations. When you choose your page, okay, if you have an Instagram, it now mine has an error because I have my Instagram as private, so I can't run ads. Um, okay, it has to be a business account. I've, I've flipped all my stuff because I don't use Instagram. But at this point, um, you can decide if you want it to go onto your Instagram or not. It's up to you. Um, it's easy. In all honesty, guys, it's easy just to say, yeah, go to Instagram. Why not? Okay. But your Instagram will pop up if you have it connected to your Facebook. All right. But this is where you want to make sure you're doing the correct business page. Okay. Now, this is where I get excited about ads. So I could go in, this is the format of the ad. So when we talk about uh, what the algorithms like when it comes to ads, video is number one, right? Algorithms will always give you on and pretty much any platform nowadays, uh, the most visibility when you do video. So absolutely. And if you're going to do a series, right? Like a five campaign ad, you know, the first one could be a video introducing yourself getting them, let them, you know, maybe ask a question, you know, and, and talk about your story. Um, and then as you go through the different ads that you're going to create, you can do a variety. You don't have to do all video, right? You could do a video, you could do a single, a static image, you can do a carousel, whatever it's up to you, but know that videos will always get top priority. So here's the thing though. We know that when someone clicks something, it's considered an action. It's considered an engagement. And the algorithms love that. They, the more people that click, 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 the better your ad, the better your posts, posts you're putting on your, your business page. The more clicks, the more the algorithms will push you out further and further and further because the algorithms are built to when, when action happens on your content, the algorithms are trained to say, hey, this person was interested. Let's see who else is interested. This is how things go viral. The more people that click, 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 
the more the algorithms push you further and further and further and further to more people. And all of a sudden you're going viral. Okay. So my trick, I think, uh, when it comes to ads is doing a carousel. Not everybody wants to do video. A carousel. Oh, I love carousels. I'm just going to do a stop share for a second so I can talk about what, what a carousel is. Carousel ad is a series of what they call cards. And this series of cards can tell a story, right? So I'm going to show you how to do one, but I'll give you an example. If I was selling a house, okay, the first card would be a picture of the outside of the house. The second card would be just coming inside the house. And I would put the order of the cards as if you were having a walking tour of the home. And on each card, you can put a headline, a description, and a, a link to something different. Each card can have its own unique link to somewhere else. So what a story you can tell in a carousel ad. So I really want you to think about carousel ads. And I'm going to show you. All right. So right off the bat, this is where you're creating. Okay. So I'm going to do manual upload. Um, I'm going to choose carousel ad. Now carousel ads minimum two up to, and I believe it's nine. I, I'm pretty sure it's only nine cards that you can do. Okay. All of this stuff that's checked mark. They're great defaults. You don't need to worry about any of those. So the things I'm walking you through are the only things you guys need to worry about at this point in the game for creating your own ads, okay? So that's why I'm going to scroll through things. All right, so I have to add, now I'm in this section of carousel cards. So I have to add a card. So I'm going to add an image card because I'm going to do a static image. Now at this point, you can bring in something from outside or you can just choose something that you might have already have sitting in your folder. So I'll even do this one. <laughs> and then you would select it. So now I have my image. It will show up here uh, at some point while my computer does what it's doing. So here's my image. Okay. Now I get to add a headline. Learn Facebook ads. Okay. Simple. I can choose a description if I want. So you can add more to this particular card, or you can choose to ignore. And at this point, paste wherever you want to send them. So maybe in this one, I'm sending them to the BACD. I, I, I don't know the actual website, but it's probably going to come up with an error, error, but let's try it. Okay. So for this card, so let's say I was doing an ad and I was showing my showing five things that I'm doing this month, events, right? Of speaking where people can come and join us. And maybe there are five different types of workshops. So each link could drive them somewhere different to sign up. So this one is for BACD. And then the next one would be for another organization. So then I have a link going to their website, wherever you want to drive the traffic. Okay. I don't know why that button wasn't turned on. Okay. I'm hoping to show you a preview. My previews aren't showing. So there's one card done, okay? Then I go and add my next one. Will it, oh, did it take it? Yeah, okay. And then I got to click on it to edit. It, it, some of their system isn't really uh, user-friendly. So now I write a headline. So who uh, release release some stress. And again, remember, don't use words like you or your, those will get you, uh, your ad rejected. I can, again, add description and add a website, but see what's happening. I'm building these little cards over here. Oh, I was trying to get this to show. So there's my first card. I'm clicking over here on the second one. So see what it does. So it's got my headline. If I was to write a description, it will also put the description under here as well. So give me a second. Oh, come on. I can't. I'm trying to get it all the way. There we go. So see how it also put a description under here? So you can tell the story. Really think about what that image is and the story you're telling and walk them through the story. By doing this, they need to click on each card. This is why I love carousel cards. They have to click to get to the next card. 
The algorithms love clicks. What a great way to trick the system, right? The more clicks I have, the more Facebook will push your ad into more news feeds. So you can do up to nine cards to tell your story. Once, and then what's going to happen, you will have, let me go back up, move down. So here's my cards. I've only got two, but you can keep adding cards. Um, now, you come into this section, whoops, section here. There are a couple of things that you need to look at. Um, automatically show the best performing cards first. That's defaulted to be turned on. You need to be aware. If you're telling a story and you don't want your cards to go out of order, then make sure you uncheck that. And then it will stay in the order that you created the story. If it doesn't matter, then do that. So the pictures, the, the cards that get the most activity, they'll move that card to the front for you. And do you want to have a card at the end? So I'll show you what that looks like. So you would have a card at the end that will take your profile picture from your business page. So if it's a logo, that's what you would see, whatever the profile picture is and the link to wherever it's going. I tend to not do this. I'm not a fan of having the card at the end. I'd like to just finish it up. I think that as soon as we put that card on the end, we become more sellers, right? You know, I like, I want, I want it to be a pleasant experience as they're clicking through the cards to have the story. And I really want to drive them to wherever that end game is going to be. So I tend to not use cards at the end. And I'm, this is new as well is the music. So if you don't want music, then make sure that you turn that feature off. Now, if you happen to be a storefront, you might want to add the map card at the end. Okay. If you happen to be that. Get rid of that. Okay. Then primary text. This is, I'm not even sure where that came from. This is where the main part of your written, the top message. So what do you sell into the audience? What are you getting them? So here's the thing. They're going to, um, visually, they're going to click on the images first before they even begin to read your primary text. Okay, but your primary text is key into getting them to do something. Another trick, you want a see more button to show up. That's usually about six lines. Okay, so I'm just going to do a bunch of this just so you guys can see. So about six lines of content. Okay, uh, Facebook's algorithms when it comes to ads is not a huge fan of a ton of emojis using capital letters, things like that. They want it simple and straightforward. Absolutely throw in some emojis. Come on, we want to show some of our personality, but just be aware, okay? It could hinder uh, how much they push you out there. But as you can see, I started typing a bunch. You're going to see over here in my visual, I have a see more button. That represents another click. We love clicks because as soon as they click the see more button, they, they just told the algorithms that they're curious or interested in what I wrote, right? They clicked a button. More clicks you have, the more reach you get. Um, let's see, uh, there's a couple of questions. Okay, Sherry, reach out if you need anything, okay? Uh, do we have some tools so we can create the cards in a consistent manner? No. Can you add different music for each card? No. Um, no, you can't. So one set of music. Um, there is no tools to use for creating these cards. It's just going to come down to you sitting here manually, literally upload the photo, enter the information, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Um, but make sure, guys, if you're going to use a carousel, um, just really understand the key elements like the headline and telling a story. We want them to click to the next slide or the next card. How do you get them to click to the next slide, right? The next card. It's the story, whatever that story is you're telling. Um, and you can, um, eat, like I said, though, on the cards, you can choose different websites or where you're driving the traffic. You don't have to use the same one, okay? Now you could choose to edit the placement of your of uh, of of where your ad's going to go. Don't even get into that. 
let the defaults work for you. They're good. There's no need to adjust that. Okay. And I'm going to, we're going to see this a little bit bigger. All right. So you write your primary text, be strategic. Um, in this case, it's showing three lines, but I think in a regular, uh, that goes out on a Facebook news feed, I think it's six lines. I don't know if Amanda Gabato is here, but she might be able to confirm if she knows. I think it's six lines before you get a see more. So that's just an additional uh, tip for you if you're writing content for your business page. Always think about how to get a see more button. It's an extra click, okay? Um, and then you want to choose your call to action. So you have quite a few options to choose from. Let me get this. Sorry, I'm just going to get this scrolled down a bit. Now I've lost it. Um, Choose, this will be sort of the overall, like the, the end game in essence. So if in the end you're driving them to your website, that will be the link you'll use. But think about, don't just choose, like there's a ton of options here, right? So really think about what it is that your ad is trying to do and use the appropriate button. You can't name it yourself. You have to choose a built-in one. So have a look at that and make sure that you choose the correct one. Okay, and then this is where your see more uh, URL is going to go. So the www, that end game, I'm driving them to my website. Make sure you paste, put it in here. And that's kind of your end game of where it's going. Okay, now I'm just going to, I know I've got errors happening and it's okay. Um, what I'm going to show you is over to the right, we have this advanced preview. So I'm just going to click on it. This opens up your ad so you can kind of see what's happening here. Let me just... Uh, um, oh, I did those already. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Uh, no, once I bought an, okay. So I do need to address this. Once I bought an ad for 50, the end bill was much higher. No, 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 no. That's something's wrong because people would just come into the post and would comment. But say, no. So no, we need to talk about that girl. Cause, um, Oh, you do have another session at 1 p.m. Oh, crap. What time is it? 10 30, 11 30, 12 30. Okay, we'll be done. Okay, uh, we need to talk about that. No, whatever your budget is, that's all you get charged for. So something else is happening when you are either setting your budget or uh, maybe look at your ad account in the background. Maybe we can get Sandy, we can get on and talk about that. Okay, because um, that's not right. Whatever your budget is, as long as you do a lifetime budget, be careful. The daily budget can really catch you, especially if you don't put an end date, right? You're paying per day. It'll keep going, ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. So be very careful. Lifetime budget, if I'm only spending $50, that's all I get billed for. So something's wrong on that, okay, Sandy? Let me know. So when I click on advanced preview, uh, this is where uh, you'll be able to visually see where your ads are going to end up. So you'll see like here, they're telling you it won't go into stories and da, 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 but it'll show you where it's going to show up. Business Explorer, who knows where that is. Right column. Uh, this is your main. Uh, that one's your main one. This is gonna, It's even going in marketplace. So we're even hitting marketplace. So places you don't even realize your ads are potentially going out. Okay. Let me just close that. There we go. All right. So once you've got all your cards up, you've done your headlines, you've told your story, you've written in your main text, you've got your link right at the bottom here. Now, if you were doing a lead ad, at the bottom of this section, there will be a spot here for you to create your lead form. It, this is where you'll find it, okay? And if you don't, it will have a, an error message telling you that you need to create a lead form as soon as you choose that particular option. Um, at the same time, you um, can you you can set up what they call Facebook Pixel and you set it up on your website. It goes, uh, it's a code and it goes in, I believe, on the header of every uh, of your website. Um, but basically what this is, is that if you set this pixel up on your website or on certain pages, you don't have to have it on the entire website. It can be on certain pages. What will happen is if um, you turn this on. So if I, it's not going to work for me because mine's not working. See, it says your meta pixel is not active. Um, what will happen here is it will then take whoever has visited your website or wherever that pixel is sitting on your website 
whoever has come to that page or pages, Facebook will actually target them um, in their news feed. So they become additional people that Facebook's targeting on your behalf based on whatever's happening with your Facebook pixel that's on your website. It's, so it's another, a lot of people use this because it's a way to uh, uh, hit people who are already somewhat interested, right? Because they've already visited your website. So uh, this, I highly recommend uh, you get your, it, uh, set it up either way, but get your website person to do this for you. Okay. Uh, if you don't know anything or not sure about codes, don't get into this, get a website person to set it up for you. Okay. It might seem simple, but I can tell you over the 15 years, the amount of trouble we've had setting up pixels, it's just crazy. Okay. But I do recommend using it uh, to go. If you're going to get into doing ads, if you're going to do them on a regular basis, if you're going to come up with a marketing strategy, then you want your pixel set up. It'll be additional elements. And then once you've done that, no, that's this is it. You hit the publish button right here in the bottom corner, and it will now go through a review process. Facebook, usually they're pretty good within uh, an hour. Usually uh, you'll be approved, but you'll receive uh, a notification and an email once you get approved. Uh, if there's any issues, you will be told that your ad was rejected. And I can tell you again, right off the bat, using the words you and your will always get your ads rejected. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do a stop share. Um, how do you set up Facebook? Yeah, Kathy wanted to know how to set up a Facebook pixel on your website. Yeah, so um, you you do need a website developer, uh, someone that works with websites to do this, but basically they'll have you go into your Facebook and copy a code. Okay, it's done through, I believe you find it through our business manager, I could be wrong, but you can just type in Facebook pixel, and it will take you there. And you're going to give this code to that website person, and then they'll know where to go to put the um, pixels. A lot of people, if they're running regular events, they'll have different landing pages for their events. So they'll create a pixel for each one of those landing pages, right? So that I'm only getting, you know, the pixel for one event, some main event that I'm doing, and then I can target them the next time around. Uh, I do recommend having a website person do it because it's not always user-friendly to get this pixel up and running. Okay. Tammy, um, we only have a time for probably one more question. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So I just have to I, go that's soon. Okay. I know. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully though, I covered enough that you guys can feel confident to at least go and start playing with your own ad right? Try it for 20 bucks. Invest 20 bucks. See what you can come up with, right? So, okay. So uh, a couple of you guys have already mentioned, reach out to me after, and um, we can go through a couple of things in a little more detail that I can help you with. Um, but does anyone have any last minute questions before we hang up? And I'm sorry to have taken so long. <laughs> We're good? Awesome. So you will receive the, um, you receive, 